Hey everyone, Leanne here from Kingdom Bloggers. So today we are talking about how to find what your target audience is actually looking for online. So we've already discussed in the previous video the importance of having a target audience and really doing the research and narrowing them down as, you know, much as possible. If you didn't see that video already, it's down in the notes below. But your target audience is literally the foundation of your entire ministry. And if you don't take the time to identify who it is you're trying to reach, but also identify what their needs are, then you're never going to see the success that you're hoping for. And I want to make this one point, and I, I've seen this over and over in the years and years that I've been doing this. When, when many people begin this journey, like I want to start a Christian blog, um, the approach is because I want to pour into people. Um, I know people need a certain thing and I have that to offer. So I want to share it with them. And the focus is I, me, 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 what I think. And unfortunately, oftentimes we know what people need, but how people are searching for things usually does not match up. There are a lot of things we know we need, but we don't actively go searching for, right? We, we often search for little help with the symptoms of a bigger problem, but we don't actually address the problem head on. And so if you want your content to be found, you cannot approach it from the, I think this is what people need. So this is what I'm going to share with them. You literally have to get in and do the research on their Google search habits as it applies to that topic or whatever you're trying to accomplish. So we are going to go in. I'm going to show you a couple of examples. It's actually very easy. I use a tool called Keywords Everywhere. There are other uh, programs you can use. Uber Suggest is another one. Um, I don't. There's some more expensive ones. Honestly, I don't recommend any of those. For ten dollars, you get a hundred thousand credits with Keywords Everywhere, and that will last you for such a long time. That is literally the only keyword research tool that I use four kingdom bloggers and my associated websites. I have three websites. So keywords everywhere. Uh, the link is down in the notes below if you want to check it out. Okay. So basically this tool, when you go into Google and do any search in that Google search bar, it is going to give you an estimated kind of average search volume for that particular phrase or topic or whatever. It's also going to give you other recommendations over on the right side. We're going to hop in and take a look at that, but it's literally telling you if someone is searching for what you just typed in and sometimes it'll say zero, meaning if they ain't looking for it, you should not be writing about it, right? What's the point in writing about something that nobody's looking for? That's like writing a book, putting it under your bed and it just never sees the light of day, right? So we want to find out how what people are searching for, number one, what kind of things are people Googling, as well as how they are searching for it. And this comes to really just word use. Like you may use a certain word in how you describe something, but maybe the majority of other people use a certain other term or phrase when they're searching for it. And so this is the kind of stuff you need to know so you can really dive in deep, figure out all the things that your audience needs and wants so that you can create content that serves that need. All right, so we are going to hop over here to Google. So literally, just in Google, I'll move my little face out of my way, and I have the keywords everywhere extension. So anything I type in here, it's going to give me some data. So let's say, I don't know, you're trying to teach uh, the Bible, like Bible studies and, you know, helping maybe new believers start diving in and reading the Bible or learning to read the Bible uh, a lot easier or whatever. So you could just start with a basic query. How, well, I guess I put my cursor there, how to read the Bible, right? And so it's going to give you some drop down recommendations. So, how to read the Bible, 12,000 average monthly search volume for that, okay? How to read the Bible in a year, how to read the Bible for beginners, chronological order, in order, effectively, daily. Lots of ways people are looking for the idea of how to read the Bible. So, that's telling you a lot of people are looking for that information for one, but that would be a really good topic. Now, I want to kind of switch gears really quick and point out one that I've had this happen in many of my past boot camp courses where, you know, I have people come to the course and this is my vision. This is who I want to help figuring out their who, right? There's a lot of times we figure out the who 
but the what is not as black and white as we think. In other words, what we are going to be offering them. So let's talk a moment about empty nest. That's a really easy one for me to show you. Um, so if you are maybe an empty nester yourself and you're wanting to pour spiritually into others in your season, like the kids have gone, it's like, what's next for my life and whatever. So let's just, um, spiritual growth for the empty nesters. Now, up here in the search bar, you'll, we'll see what the search volume is. This is zero. Nobody's looking for that. Not saying you can't pour into this group, not saying they aren't really people in that age group, obviously need their spiritual fill, but they're not going to Google to say, how do I get closer to God as an empty nester? What does God have planned for me as an empty nester? They're not using the term. So for you to write content on those specific topics, like directly, they're not going to reach anyone because nobody's looking for it. Okay. Now, how you would figure out what to write for them, you kind of have to take a backdoor approach. Um, I do kind of cover a lot of this more in detail in my courses. Um, but you really have to dive into what is that age demographic looking for? What other kinds of things? Maybe it's their struggles. Um, you know, what are they going through at that time? Like, what's the next phase of my life? Um, you know, starting a new career, um, you know, just that kind of stuff. And so there are going to be some niches that while you may know that is exactly who I need to be pouring into, it may take you quite a bit more effort to figure out the what. In other words, what is it that they are looking for online so that you can find them or they can find you, I should say. And then from that, you can begin pouring into them spiritually because outright, they're not technically looking for the spiritual fill, although they probably need it and know they need it. They're just not actively searching for it. So with parenting, another, you know, if you're a Christian mom blog, right? So you're going to have your Christian part content, like the Bible stuff, how to teach kids the Bible, things like that. You're going to have resources, you know, printables. So looking at all the things here on the right side can give you additional ideas for other things. A lot of times you'll find other ideas on this right side column. They're like, oh, I didn't even think of that. And so this is very important because again, like with the empty nester, if you are not able to find what your person is looking for and you begin writing based on what you think they need, you're going to be left very disappointed because you're not going to see growth. You're not going to see growth because nobody's searching for what you're writing. Okay. And so I have to be very, very clear about that because what I don't want is, you know, people coming into the Christian blogging It's a wonderful thing to do has a huge potential, um, not only to reach people, but pr to provide an income source, if that's your goal. But you also have to know how this, this stuff works and how it doesn't work. And so your target audience is so important. And if you don't take the time to research it, you're just not going to see the success you're hoping for. So this is basically how you kind of come in and just start just start Googling different topics. And as you put something in here, so like I just did spiritual growth for, and you'll see some other stuff coming up in here. Every single search you do, you'll see a drop down with search volumes and things. So you just pick on one and it'll give you some more stuff on the right. Now, I also want to talk for just briefly, you know, in the previous video, we talked about the importance of your ministry avatar, your target audience, just from a reaching the people perspective. But this keyword research is also very important to narrow down and really stick to that one person, that one demographic, I should say, because the Google crawlers that come to your site, they need kind of an idea of what your site's about as well in order for them to index your content. And so, you know, if you're just kind of writing to everybody and anybody, you're like a super Walmart, Google doesn't know what to do with that. And so more more focus, more drilled down that your target audience is, the better idea Google will have of what your site is about and where to index you in the millions, if not billions of other pieces of content, other websites that are already on the internet. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. I know this was kind of an overview and that's what it's meant for. I do have a course that walks you through every step of competitor research, narrowing your topics, uh, figuring out the right topics to write about, um, how to break topics apart into multiple pieces of content. And so if you're interested in that, be sure to check out 
the link down in the notes. Um, and also be sure to join my Facebook group because you can ask questions, you can get you know, feedback on queries that you're considering. And if that makes sense, I will totally answer that stuff over in my Facebook group. Um, but yeah, again, please, 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 this is the most overlooked and skipped part of the blogging process is the avatar part. People are like, oh, I know who it is and I know what I want to write about. And then they just get going. And then a couple of years later, they're like, why is my site not growing? It's because you skip that very important step. And so if you've already kind of started writing, I suggest recommend that you sort of just training time out, take a pause, stop writing new stuff. If what you've been writing isn't bringing you, you traffic, why would you con continue to do something that's obviously not working, right? So take a pause, go back to the drawing board, start over, do your research, and then create a plan for success. All right, guys, be sure to like this video and follow us here at Kingdom Bloggers so you can keep up to date with the latest videos. And please, please, please give me feedback. Drop those comments below. Let me know what um, questions you have. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.